So we all have our dream cars, and mine's a Dodge Charger. But if I wasn't so into Dodge Chargers, I think my dream car might well have been a 60s Mustang, the car that brought muscle to the masses. If you've seen earlier episodes, you should know Talk American is more than just my story. We have stories from Sweden, Germany, and obviously America in later episodes. But this edition is about Tessa Hood and the immaculate 1967 Mustang GT convertible she shares with her husband, John Norris, in Surrey. Tessa Hood started modelling as a teenager in 1969 and she's still making money at it today. This beautiful woman has been turning heads her entire life and now with her husband they indulge their passion for beautiful classic muscle cars. That's plural on purpose because they didn't limit themselves to just one. You yeah. found this wonderful AC Cobra. Yes. You fell in love with it in about 2005. Yes. And you took it to France. No, we took it to Jordan. Oh, to Jordan? Yes. On your honeymoon? Yes. I mean, what could be more romantic than AC Cobra? Well, I mean, it was wonderful. And of course, we were a bit worried about sand. It was extraordinarily hot. Um, I had a big white umbrella. I sit, we, we parked the car and I put a big white umbrella up and sit and pant because we had no roof. We've got no roof in a, in a Cobra which is one of the reasons why we've got this car. Because another time we took the Cobra to France, um, we had terrible weather, it just, it just rained and rained and rained. It drenched us and I was in an open car, you know, it, it, with, with very, very little um, cover. And I just said, you know what? I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> I really, really, really would rather we took it to another level and got a, a car with a roof. And it seemed to be the, the obvious answer, a nice big V8, um, a stylish car. It's cheap to run, it's cheap to buy. All the parts are available on, the, you know, within a 24 hours we can get parts we need. Uh, and it's absolutely fantastic. John and Tessa have asked me to explain that when Tessa says cheap, she means comparatively speaking. The average cost of, uh, Beautiful 60s Mustang is far cheaper than your Jaguar E-Types or even your million dollar AC Cobra or say even a 60s Maserati. It was you <laughs> that purchased it for yes, him? Yes, yes. Yeah? Well, the year before I'd bought him um, a model. In fact, I think it was a bullet to be honest. I said, there you are, there's your present. And he, was, he kind of looked at me and went, thanks. Um, and then the next year I'd had a reasonably good year. And I said, well, do you know what? There's enough in the pot. Would you like one? And he went, you're know, kidding me. I said, no, no, we can do one. Let's, let's get one. <laughs> so, so we started researching. And we wanted black on black on black. You know, interior, roof, car. Triple black. Yes. But I love black. And to me, a triple black is perfection. In another episode soon, I'm finally going to introduce you to one of my best friends, Mike. Magic Mike, as I call him is another that believes cars don't look better than when they're black. When I shot this episode with John and Tessa, it turned into a serendipitous day because we met up in the car park of a grand English country pub, well known to a few UK classic car clubs. And there, just 20 yards from us in that car park, was another special Mustang. What a wonderful car to pass. Look, there's Steve McQueen. There's Steve McQueen. Hello. That's the very reason that we have this motor car. <laughs> I think we've got Steve McQueen on record automatic at home. What, the bullet, the whole film? Yes, it, it just, we watch it and watch it and watch it and watch it. Look, look at me waving at people like it's my car. <laughs> <laughs> Mustangs are very popular in the UK. They epitomise the best of American road culture and they ooze cool because of Steve McQueen chasing down that mean looking black 68 Charger in the film Bullet. Check out this bullet tribute fastback I saw at a big show put on by the American Auto Club International. 
you will see plenty of Mustangs at every UK American car show because, as Tessa explained, they are comparatively cheap. You get a lot of cool for your buck with almost any Mustang and it has to be said, when they were launched in 1964, these coupes proved sporty cars could be enormously popular. What is it about the Mustang do you think that really appeals to John and you? Is it like this American icon? Yes, I think so. It, it's For him, it's Steve McQueen. It's the, the, that race through the San Francisco streets, you know, even though it wasn't this car, it was, it was the, the, the other version. The fastback, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And, you know, for us, it's an it's a iconic classic. It's something that is very true to its period. So months after I first filmed with John and Tessa, I bumped into the pair of them at this huge American classic show called Americana. It takes over the whole market town of Horsham and we're going to do an episode all about Americana later in the series. But I wanted to ask Tessa about why the pair of them adopted to put overdrive in their beautiful Mustang. It gives us a very long range uh, of miles now. We can do 24 to the gallon now. Terrific, really love it. So is overdrive, was that one of the key things you were thinking about? Yes, definitely, because we put a long range tank in. We bought it specifically to do long trips in. So the extra um, torque, I suppose you'd say, with the, with the gears gives us that much more mileage. It's great, you know, we can go. Have you ever been to France? Do you have any idea what it's like in France when to find a petrol station when you're not on the motorway? It can be a nightmare. And we got stuck a couple of times before when we had like 12 miles to the gallon and now we've got 25 miles to the gallon and it makes all the difference. Have you noticed how we Brits blame the French for everything? Anyway, back on the original shoot day, John was driving the Mustang back from an area where I was shooting with Tessa and he showed me what this old girl could really do. But John isn't keen to be on camera, even though he is hiding behind a hat and shades, so we're leaving Tessa to tell their story. Anyway, I mentioned it was a serendipitous day earlier, and it wasn't just because of the bullet car in the car park. We passed another convertible Mustang on our way back to the pub, underlining my point about how popular they are as American icons. But let's not forget these cars broke the mould and they offered a sportiness that wasn't usually affordable, a sportiness that's still appealing today. So now we're living in more enlightened times, you know, girl power, which has been around <laughs> for 21 years now, yeah. you know, since the Spice Girls formed and, and said all that. How do you find being a woman of substance driving a car that is every man's dream? I think it's great. <laughs> I mean, exactly what you just said. I'm, I'm where they'd like to be, sitting here driving this car and it gives me a real buzz to be honest um, it's very special the feeling for driving something so pretty and so powerful as this and i do put my foot down when i get on a motorway in france or something um, i do like to, to feel the power and hear the power going under a tunnel going through a tunnel that's fabulous Owning a spectacular classic car isn't just joyful for the owners who are lucky enough to have them, it's also wonderful for the public who attend the shows that the cars are bought to, and even when these cars are out and about, they get a lot of attention and compliments. We love being approached and asked what year is it, and uh, what, what have we done to it, and where have we been in it, that's part of the joy, especially in France we've noticed that. If we stop in traffic jams in towns, people will run through the traffic to get to us and ask us about the car before we drive a bit further, you know. It's lovely. I love that interaction with people. Do you get the same reaction with the Cobra? Oh yes, but funnily enough, more with this one. And do you know why I think it's because people tend to think the Cobra might be a replica? And there are an awful lot of replicas. It is the most copied car, the Cobra. So when they see that, they immediately think replica. But with this one... Do you feel privileged? Very. I'm very lucky. I realise how lucky I am. I think if I'd had a family, then this wouldn't have happened. Because you know what it's like with kids. And I'd probably die an old woman on my own, you know, with, with, with no one coming to visit me because I've got no family. But, you know, that's the price you pay for a bit of fun now. <laughs> Do you think it'll be worth it? I think it'll be worth it. <laughs> And that's where we're going to leave it with Tessa and John's GT Mustang. 
it's by far the cheaper of the two classics that they own but they much prefer taking that away to France and they get a far bigger reaction from the all-American Mustang and that's why I love American classics. Later on in the series we'll have more fast forwards for you especially with our episode on Chris White who runs classic car hire Yorkshire with his stable of Mustangs. Pun intended there. So if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends on social media. While you're on social media, please follow Talk American on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And of course, please subscribe to us on YouTube so you get alerts when we release more videos and we can build up a fan base and uh, a following. There is also more information on talkamerican.com. And finally, Give us some feedback in the comment section below this video. We're keen to see what you think and maybe you've got some great ideas for future videos. But for now, it's time to say goodbye. So I guess we'll talk again soon.